Well, what do you know? Another episode of Creative Chaos! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am joined today by the incredibly talented... Kevin Zeef. And... Angelica Trey. Greg Smith. Alex Sanborn. Here's how it works. We're going to combine random pop culture icons to build a hero, villain, and their story. Stay tuned to the end, where it will all come together in an animated trailer. We're gonna start by pulling a hero character from this hat. Hmm, what do we got here? Yeah, this one feels good. Okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine these characters into one solitary individual. Let's start with what Kevin pulled. We got the alien from Signs. Wow. Spooky. Everyone Watch out for the that. water. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't like water. Spoiler alert. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> if you Jace. haven't seen it. Oh, jeez. I got the Borg. Oh. Okay, yeah. so we've got one alien species being kind of hijacked by another. So this is like a super alien with mechanical components. Yeah. And and he loves grabbing kids and blowing poison on their and face. And this is a hero character, so, oh, it, okay. I, you know. Oh, okay. um, maybe it's a good poison. Maybe yeah, it's Yeah, if you remember, like, I think it was Hugh who was kind of, he, sure. he, was, he was a standout kind of Borg who thought for himself. He was a rogue Borg. And more and more, we started to see that throughout the Star Trek universe. The Borg began to have some self-identity. So this hero probably was part of a hive mind alien sort of thing going on. And then the character or this hero broke off from that mm -hmm. and is trying to find their independence. Yeah, and it hates water. And it hates water. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about what this guy looks like. Kind of lanky, I'm thinking, with uh, probably some sort of ocular implant at least. Mm -hmm. So us, yeah. basically, the two of us <laughs> is what you're saying. Tame your self-image issues, Alex. <laughs> no, let's work them out on camera We're right so now. Deep. Yeah, so deep. Let's so get many. into it. <laughs> let's get Zoom into in. it. It's, it's got to be incredibly dry. But with like all kinds of like parts and, and computer chips and, yeah. um, and you know, technology yeah. all throughout his body. Let's give it a name. Yeah. Um, Fuck. The Borg uh, and the alien from Science. So well, the aliens from Science didn't actually have a name, right? We're, they were just the, the aliens. Just aliens. The Borg had designations, so... Right, right. Wow, you really but again, know we can a lot more about think this outside the box. Feel free to think <laughs> outside the box. You know, his name could be Bob. What about Dry Bob 2000? Dry, dry Bob 2000? Dry yeah. Bob? Yeah. Dry okay. Bob 2000. Okay. He loves dryness more than anything. It quenches his thirst. Yeah. And okay. 2000, you know, because he's from the future. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're shooting this in the current year of 1996, yeah. right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Great. I love this. Dry Bob 2000. We want to give him a descriptor that's going to kind of add some flair, I think. So if you wouldn't mind, Kevin, go ahead and pull something special out of that hat. Okay. Well, this one feels weird. All right. What do you very, got? Very long and thin. Like him. Uh, yeah, like, like him. Like us. Lost his ability to walk after an acid accident. Aww. Could, this, so, could this be a water accident instead of an acid accident? Yeah, I could see that working. Maybe he was like really smelly, I had to go on a date, and he tried to take a shower, and he's like, oh crap, I forgot, like water kills me. Now my <laughs> can't walk anymore, and he's like slurping out of the, yeah, he the was, shower. He was stepping into the shower, and yeah. it touched his legs. Yeah, yeah, he's like, forgot, like, so stupid. Dry Bob is just oh, so stupid. My, my wiring, what was I thinking? I'm a robot, I should know better. If he lost <laughs> his ability to walk and he's, he's a bit of a handicapped alien cyborg, mm -hmm. what's he after in life? Independence. Maybe mm. he's trying to get enough money to buy a rascal. So he's Maybe. working towards um, some equipment <laughs> that would help him function as a normal human being and gain his independence. Right. Great, well, let's give him a villain. What do you say? Sure. Yeah, all right, let's pull a, a, a couple of names out of this hat. And you two are going to create oh, thank you, sir. his counterpart. All right, Alex, let's start with you. What did you pull? Stan's dad from South Park. And I pulled a Quick Man from Mega Man 2. Yeah, Quick Man just has a giant, like, yellow V on his head, and he goes really fast and throws boomerangs. So he's clearly Australian. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> really enthusiastic about everything. He just dives headfirst into everything he yeah. does without care for the consequences. Yeah, but he doesn't finish things. Oh no, like he has a lot of like different projects. Like, oh, I think I might uh, record a folk album, 
And he like lays down one acoustic guitar bed, and then he's like, oh, I'm done with that for now, and he moves on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right, let's describe what he looks like when he is in his supervillain form. There's pink accents yeah. uh, on a bodysuit that's way too tight for his figure. Yeah. like he's this not is, in shape. No, and this bodysuit maybe fit him in college. Sure. Maybe he just kept it in the, in the attic. Sure. Uh, but he's like, no, it still fits. And his wife's like, um, okay. <laughs> Have fun. His nice wife is so supportive. She's yeah. just like, hey, whatever you want to do, you know? What, what is this fellow's name? Australians have all sorts of weird uh, uh, words that they invent, right? Yeah. Things. So it, it, it can be literally anything like Shundi Bun Herdebeck, mm -hmm. you know, or uh, I don't know, what's. what's Shundi Bun Herdebeck. I'm not mad at you, that. You think not, you can remember that? I, it's going to be a tough one, but I. Shundi Bun Herdebeck. <laughs> I like hurdy back because it sounds like hurry back and yeah. he's quick. Hurdy yeah. back. That's like what he says to his boomerang when he throws them. Hurry back. <laughs> and what if he's flat out just, he, he's like a middle aged dad yeah. from a suburb of Sydney who has just decided to become a supervillain? And yeah, that's, so that's what he's right. throwing himself that, into. That's he's what like, he's getting you know, into these Like days. his kids think he's lame, yeah. he's an accountant in real life, and he's not very good at being an accountant. No, he just... like, like the, his boss is always kind of like making him come in on the weekends, and sure. he's, not, he's not man enough to kind of like. Say no. Yeah. Hey guys, I got an idea. Let's give him something. Just to add a little bit of uh, flair to the character. What'd you get? This makes sense. He has an adorable puppy sidekick. <gasps> Adorably <laughs> evil. Well. <Whoa. Whoa. laughs> an adorable puppy sidekick. Okay. What's his name? What's the adorable puppy sidekick's name? Yeah, like uh, Sloppy Foot? Uh, Sloppy Foot? Uh, Sloppy Foot? Sloppy Foot. Sloppy Foot. So his sidekick Sloppy Foot is by his side at all times. Mm -hmm. Shundi Bun wants something. Let's focus on that. I think he wants his kids to think he's cool. Yeah. Like he's so tired of his mundane, boring life. Yeah. He just wants his kids to think he's cool. He wants his wife to have sex with him again. Mm. You know. Yeah, it's been a long time. It has been years. Not in a malicious way. It's just like, you no. know. She's supportive, she's but just not interested. Thing. Yeah. You know. He just wants to like feel alive again. Yeah. Yeah, he's a little dead inside and he wants so to it, feel alive. If it takes putting on a very tight bodysuit and walking around with a sloppy footed puppy and like getting in these folks' ways, then you know what? That's well, I imagine encountering this uh, biomechanical alien we've come to call Dry Bob 2000, maybe he finds some meaning in that encounter. They both feel kind of like stuck in a machine, in Dry Bob's case, literally. Mm -hmm. In Shundi Bun's case, you know, the machine of society. Metaphorically, yes. yeah. And they both kind of have to like get out. They both want freedom. It's That's true. But mm -hmm. in different ways. Mm -hmm. Strange. What if it was that like there's like a, uh, there's a championship in Australia. It's a, it's a track meet and whoever wins gets uh, robotic legs. Yeah some sort of competition. Let's pull an obstacle. If uh, you wouldn't mind, dear. And I'm really curious about what this is going to do to this beautiful story that we're weaving. Oh, okay. Uh, hero falls victim to identity theft. <sighs> oh. oh, now who did that? Mm. So maybe as one of the ways to impress uh, his children, Chundi Bob kind of like learned how to hack because his daughter's a hacker on That's the right. side, right? That's know, right. She's 12, she's in middle school, she wants to rebel a little, mm -hmm. right? So he tried to learn how to do it yeah, to, and he, you know, hang with her and yeah. be cool. Yeah, and he hacked into the sort of consciousness of Dry Bob and, like, sort of, like, tried to assume his identity. Yeah, that sounds like a villainous kind of plan, right? To suddenly take over the body of Dry Bob 2000. Maybe he makes him walk into the ocean? Ooh. Something like that? Now he's pissed. All right, so let's find the place where all oh, the, the, the shit hits the fan here, I fellas. Hope, I hope it's Australian or else we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what do you got there, Greg? Well, they're gonna take a quick flight to the Empire State Building. All right. As far as I know is in New York City, America? Yeah, so the, the race has expanded all the way to New York. And by the time that he got to New York, he's so fucked up, and we're talking about Dry Bob 2000, from all the water and the mechanics, he's, maybe he's bloated and he's monstrous, right? And, he, and he, he gets on the Empire State Building. And there's this whole internal struggle here because he's trying to get his independence back, but he's being hacked. 
right. Mm -hmm. So his dad, yes, took him over, sent him there to destroy the Empire State Building, to destroy New York, and he's going to save them. His kids are going to think he's so cool. Uh, yep, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he sees this as a great opportunity to show him as this cool super villain. And he thinks there's no way he can lose because he's controlling uh, uh, Dry Bob's mind. Yeah, surety Shirty back, back. Maybe maybe clones his dog and then puts them all in like these biplanes that are just shooting the slime onto him. Onto, uh, oh, yeah. So there's adorable pluppies flying. Yeah, they're, they're the flying. They're shooting. They're shooting there? pus nice. out of their out of their legs onto the the King Kong style scenario. Mm -hmm. Right, know? right. But maybe finally at the end, Dry Bob does gain some of his own consciousness back, mm -hmm. and he's able to, um, you know, at least for a brief moment, realize his his independence. Yeah, right. Before he tragically falls from the top of the. Well, what if he what if he jumps off the Empire State Building onto the Chrysler Building and impales himself in order to save New York City, so that uh, our dad is no longer the hero right. to his kids, right? Yeah. Right. Dry Bob is the hero to all of New York. He takes it away from him. Yeah. He had to he's, sacrifice himself. Yeah, he's, he's, he's sacrificed yeah, He's himself. on the top of the Empire State Building, getting, getting covered in slime from these dogs and biplanes, and it's falling all over and destroying the Empire State Building, and he decides, you know what? I don't need to win this competition. I need to save this building and the people. That's right, something superseded the importance of that race in the end. A true hero. He saw himself as incomplete and thought he needed the legs, but what he really needed was just the bravery. It ends like Troop Beverly Hills, where Shandiban grabs the trophy for himself and he runs off with it. But we know deep down that he didn't earn it. Nah, yeah. All right, let's talk about a title for this thing. Um, what comes to mind? Like a handicap, robot, alien, Australian. The Australian Handicap Robot. Dry alien. Bob's Big Race. <laughs> Dry Bob's Big Handicap Outback Race. <laughs> <laughs> Dry Bob's Big Handicap Outback Race to America. You could make it uh, biblical. Uh, the Book of Dry Bob 2000. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Let's take a look. <laughs> he came from a hive mind. Water is bad. There is no me. Only us. Man, I can't stand being a part of this hive mind. I'm getting the hell out of here! Shundi Bun strived for the adoration of his children. One day, I'll make you proud of your papa. Gail Smithers reporting live. As you can see, the craft has nearly landed now. Are we experiencing the first visitor from another world? What's your name? Dry Bob 2000. Will you participate in the Outback Trackathon to America? The winner will receive the Individuality Totally Not Part of a Hive Mind Award. Huh, that's exactly what I'm looking for. It was the race of the century. I'm gonna win that race, you know. Dad, you don't stand a chance. You're too slow. Ha! You haven't seen my supervillain costume yet. But when tragedy strikes... Oh no! I forgot! All bets are off, baby. Now! This summer... And it's still on! It's the race of the century! Don't miss the biblical proportions of... Dry Bob's Big Ass Handicapped Outback Race to America. 